Good evening. It's good to see each of you here. If you would stand together, the words are going to be on the screen. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tide. Saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward is our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell to sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing ye islands on the sea, echo back ye ocean caves, earth shall keep her jubilee, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, give the winds a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nations now rejoice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, shout salvation full and free, highest hills and deepest caves, this our song of victory, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Thank you, you may be seated. All right, good evening. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Um, do remember the special request that uh, had flooded my inbox this week. Seemed like a lot of people had special prayer requests going on. Let's uh, remember our nation in prayer. Uh, it needs it bad. Yeah. Let's remember that. And let me hear from you. Anyone on this side got a special request that needs to mention? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sure will. Yeah, those traveling away on vacation. I say that every week. None of them takes me with them. <laughs> Anyone else? In the middle here? Miss Bradley? Okay. Sure. Yes, dear. Yeah, Zachary got COVID. Tina's nephew. Remember Tina's daddy still in rehab as well. Anyone else on this side? Special prayer. Okay. Okay, just remember that. How's it, how, how are they progressing on getting Ronnie moved? Okay. All right. Remember Amy in prayer? She's got some type of infection going on in her ears or around her ears. So uh, remember that in prayer. Any others? Unspoken, I'm lifting another hand. If you can and you're able today, let's have altar prayer. Pray to the God of heaven and pray that the Lord will bless these requests. And Amy, if you want to come around here, I know you want to be anointed tonight. So pray and ask God to help you. Let's pray and believe God today, okay? Our Father in heaven, God, in Jesus' name, as we come to you today with humble hearts, 
Lord, calling upon you, Lord, for the healing of my friend. God, I pray you'd reach down from the windows of heaven, dear God, and touch her, dear Lord. Lord, for all of these other prayer requests that were given tonight, God, from those that are battling cancer, those that are in bereavement, those families, dear God, that are in trouble, Lord, I pray that you would just reach down from the windows of heaven, dear God, and give them what they need tonight. Lord, we know that you've promised us many things in your word. One of those promises is that you'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. And God, we're going to trust in your promises that, Lord, if we call upon you, believing in faith that you'll answer. And God, I know always that uh, the answer sometimes comes back as no or just wait. But Lord, may we have the faith of knowing that you're there and, Lord, that you can help. Lord, I pray for each and every family that's represented here tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just, uh, uh, Lord, reach down from heaven once again, God, and touch and bless. Lord, speak to our hearts, Lord, in a special way. For God, we all need that special touch from time to time. And God, we, we bow before your throne, Lord. We know and can have faith that you're going to be there. And Lord, that you're going to help us in a special way. Lord, I pray with you'll be with the service tonight, the Bible study, God. I pray that you would continue to bless our church. Continue, dear Lord, to meet each and every need. Again, Lord, we lift Amy up to you, God, in obedience to James chapter 5. I pray that you would give her that special touch from above. Lord, we'll surely thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, we do humbly ask. Amen. the Lord. Scott and Harold, if you'll just come by and do what you do, we'll receive our offering tonight. But, um, stand and brag on Jesus tonight. Anyone got a word you want to share? God's been good to you this week. We'd surely love to hear from you. Anyone at all? Amen. to us. Yes, sir, brother. I'd like to thank the Lord for saving me, first of all. Moving me to this church. Bless you, buddy.
puts pain in perspective if you think about what he went through, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Glad you're here, buddy. Hey, you know what you said you're going through. That's the main thing. That means you're coming through on the other side. It means you're not going to get stuck in whatever you're in. And we always have to remember that. Listen, we, we know we're di living in a, in a difficult day. All right? And uh, times are not good. But our God is still the same. And don't you forget that. Uh, all this is is biblical prophecy coming to fruition. Um, Brother Joe Floyd came to me today, or he, was sitting, or he called me actually, and was talking about some stuff that he had seen and heard. And I said, well, Brother, you know, that's." he said, I can't believe this. And I said, well, I believe it because the Bible said this is going to happen. And uh, I keep reminding you, you know, the Bible says, as in the days of Noah were, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. We're there. We're there. It could be any time. And, um, you know, people can count it as a myth, as a fairy tale, or whatever they want. But I know when God goes into your heart and changes your life, and you become a new creature, um, something does that change in you. Something does that change in you. And that's the Lord. Uh, I don't have the same desires I used to have when I was lost. Uh, I don't have the same um, affections that I had when I was lost. Now, I've been perfect. Nope, never will be. I had a dear man to reach out to me. Really don't even know him. I, and this happens all the time. I don't even know people, but they, they, they will, from across the country, they'll send me messages. Hey, Pastor, can you pray for, pray for me? He said, I'm saved, but I've, I've, I've done some things that, I'm not pleased with and I've let God down and I just gave him scripture 1 John 1 9 and, and went from there and I said you need to do what you know you need to do and that's what I mean that's what doing what we do is about right. amen, amen. Uh, we can't uh, condemn someone for messing up when, when we've messed up our own selves right, right? so um you know, I uh, we just got to love one another, help one another, and uh, continue to, to go forward for the cause of Christ. And uh, if we would have done this uh, 50 years ago, we might not have been in this mess today. Right. right? I mean, those Supreme Court justices, there was one that got, uh, you know, somebody was arrested today that was out ready to, to assassinate one of the Supreme Court justices. Um, and they're gathering around their homes and they're saying this and they're saying that but let me tell you something um, that's illegal in itself trying to persuade a justice with what they do um, it's not right but you know if you're on one side of the fence it's right if you're on the other side it's wrong and that's not right but uh, that's just the way it is and uh, we have to continue to stand for that which is right and what's in the Word of God. And that's important tonight, okay? So you remember that. Anyone else before we get into the Word of God? I believe we'll forego a song tonight and we'll just, uh, let's just get right into the Word. Proverbs chapter number 24 tonight. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. I was watching a, a, a little bit of a Western movie the other day and I I'm not a movie watcher really one of those guys got knocked off his saddle knocked off his horse and uh, the guy that was there with him he said let me give you some good advice you get back on your saddle you get back on that horse and you continue to ride 
See, in life, we can get knocked off of our saddle sometimes. In life, we can get knocked down. But the key is, is when you're knocked down, you can't stay down. Right. You got to get back up. Right. And that's the most difficult thing in life for a lot of people. And when you get knocked down, someone may come by and help you up, or someone may come by and push you down. Right? But you yourself can get up. Can get up. Proverbs chapter number 24 and verse 16. Let's stand together for the reverence of the reading of God's word and prayer for the message tonight. The Bible says in verse 16, For as a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Let's pray. Father God, we do thank you for your word. Thank you for these that are gathered uh, here tonight. And Lord, I pray that the word of God will help each and every one, dear Lord, in the sound of my voice, for the ones that are here in the sanctuary, to the ones that are, uh, Lord, listening online tonight. God, we pray that you would give special blessings from heaven. And Lord, I'll surely thank you, praise you, give you glory and honor for what you do for your people tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. Let's be honest with one another. Even the best gets knocked out of the saddle every once in a while. I remember uh, the boxer by the name of Mike Tyson. And boy, when he went in to fight, it sounded like his punches were like nobody else's. They, he was short. He was stocky. He was strong. And he thought he had the world by the tail until he ran into one guy, Bone Crusher Smith. And uh, Bone Crusher had lost uh, some boxing matches before. Bone Crusher had been defeated before. Um, but uh, that night uh, was not Mike Tyson's night. He had won the majority of his matches in just a few seconds, knocking out some of the best fighters uh, in the world. And now he was fighting a guy that had uh, um, lost several matches already, but it was just, uh, uh, everybody thought it was maybe just a show or a publicity stunt. And uh, when Mike Tyson went in that ring, they thought for sure he was going to knock this guy out uh, by the first round before the first round is over. But guess what? The great Almighty that no one thought they would beat got beat that night. He got knocked out himself because he came in and he was not prepared. If you try to attack life without being prepared, you're liable to get knocked down too. There are several things in life that can come at you, whether it can be physical or whether it be financial or whether it be mental. Everything comes at you a lot of times at one time. And when it crushes at you and fights against you and puts you down... Or and the enemy, Satan himself, thinks he's got you where he wants you. All of a sudden, you've got to make the decision, am I going to get up or am I going to stay down? Because if you stay down, he's going to put that foot on your neck and he's going to keep you down. But the thing is this, we've got power within ourselves through the almighty God of heaven uh, to get up again, amen? Get up and dust yourself off, uh, get back on your saddle and continue to ride. There was a quote by a cowboy one time that said, there never was a horse that couldn't be rode and never was a cowboy who couldn't be throwed. It works both ways. That word falleth in our scripture, a just man falleth, means to cast down, to fall away, uh, to fall prostrate, or to over, be overthrown. The significance of being in the saddle as opposed to being knocked off the saddle is simple. If you're in the saddle, you're, you're going somewhere. <laughs> If you're in the saddle, you're making progress. If you're in the saddle, you're doing a job. If you're in the saddle, you are a busy person doing what you need to do. Winston Churchill once said, no hour of life is wasted that is spent in the saddle. In other words, if we're on that saddle, we're going in the right direction. We're going to try to do what we know to do according to thus saith the word of God in our lives. When we go out and we 
talk to individuals you want to be a person of character you want to be a person of honesty you want to be a person that people can look to and say hey would you please pray for me I had a phone call tonight from a lady in Calpians I really don't know the lady she called me a couple of weeks ago wanting to know about the church and where we are she said would you please pray for our need pray for my need and, and, our, and my husband he's got a physical need would you please pray and I said yes I sure would I counted an honor that people would call and just ask me to pray for them uh, whether it be long distance or whether it be right down the road amen uh, if you've been knocked out of the saddle you're not going anywhere if you've been knocked off your horse uh, you're not making uh, uh, you're not making any impact uh, if you've been knocked out of the saddle you're probably bruised and you're probably sore and listen life will, will in itself will bruise you life in itself will make you sore and you've got a decision to make are you going to lay there or are you going to get up huh when you're young and you fall off the horse you may break something you get my age and you fall off the horse you splatter <laughs> right we all do things start breaking when we get old now, I know I don't look old, but I'm old. Right? <laughs> Why do people get knocked off their horse? Why do people get knocked out of their saddle? How many times have you seen those cowboys on them old films get tackled by an Indian and, and knocked off their horse? They're, they're riding through a mountain pass and, and out of nowhere a bad guy jumps out from behind a boulder or a rock and knocks them down. I hate to admit it, but I've been knocked off my saddle a few times. I've been blindsided by the enemy more times than I'd really want to admit it. I've had many uh, enemies come out of nowhere and knock me down uh, uh, numerous times. And, and listen, uh, uh, sometimes we just get tuckered out by our feebleness uh, and our feebleness of mind. I know my wife came in tonight and, and, and she was tired and I hadn't seen her this tired in a while. And I know what's going to happen when she gets home. She's going to get in that shower. She's going to hop into bed and she's going to be gone before I even think about going to bed. But you know what? We get tired. And when we get tired, we at times let our guards down and the enemy begins to move in. We've all seen uh, uh, those old cowboy movies and they were literally fall out of the saddle due to exhaustion. They didn't fall out of the saddle because of the trail. It was because uh, they were tired. Too many days on the trail, too many miles uh, without a break. And the best of men, the strongest and the most experienced men eventually slump over and fall out because they get mentally tired tired and they get physically tired a lot of people are worried today a lot of people are concerned I went to the gas station yesterday I don't remember the last time I went to the gas station that I did not fill my car up in other words when I go I like to make most of my time I fill it up and I ride it down till it gets about to a quarter tank or less and I go fill it up again I didn't fill it up this time anybody know why It got to 25 bucks, and I said, I'm quitting right there. I didn't get a half a tank. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world? But you know what? Many of us are worried how high that's going to go. Guess what? It's going to get worse before it gets better. It's going to get worse before it gets better. It's marching its way to five, but it'll be over six. I'm thinking. There's no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no stopping it right now. There's nothing that nobody is doing to stop it. Right. That's right. I mean, when you got someone stand there and say, well, there's nothing we can do. You just got to live with it. That's what they want you to do, buy an electric car. Yeah. Who, who can all go out and afford to buy a brand new electric car right now? If you can, let me know. You might buy me one right that's what they want you to do so you know it, 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 it's terrible and they were talking about shrinkflation tonight on the news instead of a 14 ounce bag of chips now you get a 12 ounce bag of chips man they wasn't nothing but air in them to begin with 
<laughs> and now there's hardly nothing in those things. But guess what? The price stayed the same or even went up, right? We've been blindsided by some things. I was uh, uh, walking, well, I was riding through District 2 where I live and riding through there and looking at the county council signs and I'm like, whom, whom am I going to vote for? I'm going to like, well, that's pretty easy for me to figure out because the one that's in there now, I'm not going to vote for him. Now, this is me personally. I'm not going to vote for him because I called him like eight times because he's supposed to be over building and permits to talk about this $40,000 pond that don't have any water in it back here. And uh, he never really returned my call. Just thought I'd let you know that. What happens when an individual don't do their job? Absolutely. What ever happened to what, what happened to politicians that don't do their job? They need to be fired too. How do they get fired? At the ballot box. Amen. Oh, listen, people can get feeble-minded. People can get feeble in their spirit. They can get feeble in their heart. That's why we have a couple of revivals a year. And that's why we, uh, w listen, we encourage you to worship the Lord. We encourage you to praise God. Why? Because that helps you spiritually. And once you help yourself spiritually, it can help you physically. And my friend, when it's all working together in the same direction, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. I'm not really concerned about what's going to happen tomorrow uh, at the QT. I'm not. Why not? Because I, I can't control what goes on at the QT, whether they raise the price to 10 bucks or 20 bucks a gallon, right? But I can trust in the God of heaven who saved my soul from a devil's hell to provide every need that I've got. Amen. 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 I got to thinking early. I've got to go preach in Tennessee. I've got to go preach in Kentucky. And, and, and I'm thinking, I was like, boy, it might do me better just to fly instead of, instead of drive because of the gas prices, right? And, and you start thinking about things and I started strategizing a little bit but am I worried about it? No, I'm not worried about it. God's going to take care of it. Right. Amen. And, and, and see we can't be fearful tonight over anything that is happening in this world uh, from the virus uh, to the economy uh, to the depression to whatever it is because there's only one thing that's sure and there's only one thing that's constant and that's God's word and the God of the Bible and that God can take care of you even through the most difficult of times. Most difficult of times. You see, before it gets any better, everything has to bust. And when it busts, it, 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 it seems to get worse, right? Before everything comes back into line. But you know what? There's some things we just got to lay down. Sometimes we just get tuckered out by feebleness. Sometimes they, uh, we've got friends that uh, uh, turn their back on you. How many of you had friends turn their back on you? I done something today trying to help somebody out, and I got on, out on a limb for somebody and then got sawed off. Y'all ever been there? Yeah. That happens. And I'm like, hmm, well, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 41, 9, Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread had lifted up his heel against me. See, Abraham watched his nephew Lot walk away and leave him for Sodom and Gomorrah. David dodged javelins from Saul, a man he loved and fought for and ministered to. Do you think that Jesus Christ was thrown for a loop when Judas kissed him and then betrayed him? Paul the apostle took a beating when Demas forsook him and turned to the world. There's no better place to heal a broken heart than on the back of a horse, one cowboy said. But you know what? The best place to heal a broken heart is to allow the Lord to heal it. Samson, you remember the story of Samson and Delilah? Samson made a, a bunch of mistakes, uh, but he was able to get God's touch at the end. David messed up with Bathsheba, but he got right with God and become a man after God's own heart. So remember, when you think that you've fallen off the saddle and you've gone too far, you have not gone too far to God to resurrect you uh, and forgive you uh, and put you where you need to be. We've got plenty of examples in this place. Peter denied the Lord three times. Peter. But God still used him. 
because God wasn't through with him yet. Whatever your reasons for getting thrown off the saddle, you've got a decision to make. What you do when that happens, you either lay there and bleed or you get back up. There's only one right decision if you ask me, you get back up. See, if you, if, you, if, you, if you stay down and intentionally stay down, you may never get up. People fall into these deep, dark, depressive states in the day in which we live. And my friends, it is very difficult for them to get up and get out. And they have to have a little help. And it, sometimes it just takes someone that loves the Lord to come along and reach out their hand to them. Grab them by the hand and say, come on, son. Or come on, ma'am. Or come on, sir. Come on, little one. I want to help you get to where you need to be. Let me just give you a helping hand. I'm going to pray with you today. And you need to get up and do what what you know that you need to do why should we climb back on the saddle I've been hurt by the for the last time I know people today that won't even go to a church any church because they may have worn their feelings on their shoulders or somebody didn't shake their hand as they left the building I think, church, we're better than that. If we're not, we're, you've, you've failed and I've failed even more. Listen, if I don't get everybody's hand when you leave here, know that I love you. Sometimes somebody's praying, I'm taking off the garb, taking off the headset, taking off the jacket, and y'all gone before I even get down there. And that's okay. I don't have to be petted. You shouldn't either. <laughs> Amen. 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 You shouldn't either. Right. We're not in the petty business. Right. I, um, you know, it. it, it um, when I look around the sanctuary and I see uh, people that should be here and not here, uh, yeah, I get worried about them. Do you call upon them? Sure, do. You, you find out what's going on with them, and you know, are, are they working? Are they gone on vacation? Are they sick? Or are they had a death? Or what, what? What's going on with them? Yeah, I do that. But you know what? After a while, you have to dust your feet off and just go on and accept the fact they are what they are, and they're only going to be as faithful as they've been. And until they make up a change in their mind right. that they're going to do what they need to do, there ain't nothing I can do. Right. I can uh, sit here and, 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 and teach you and tell you all about tithing, but until you make up your mind that you're going to do it, you're not going to listen to me or what God has to say. You have to make up your mind if you're going to get up or not. In the morning, you have to make a decision if you're going to get up and go to work or not. You're going to have to make a decision if you're going to get up and you're going to pray. You've got to make a decision if you're going to get up and do what needs to be done around your home. Listen, I, I've got some grass to cut tomorrow. I've got a field in the backyard that I'm going to have to cut, hopefully, tomorrow uh, if it doesn't rain. You know, I'm going to have to get up tomorrow and decide to put everything else aside to get out there and do that because if I don't, guess what? It won't get done. Just like yours, right? Why should we get back on the saddle and ride? Well, number one, the reasons you hurt, it's not going to last forever. Amen. Let's be honest, something or somebody, if they knock you down, it could have been your own fault, it could have been somebody else's. Bottom line, you got hurt. One minute you're serving God, the next minute you're sitting on the ground. Whatever it was that knocked you out of the saddle, whatever it was that caused you to fall, doesn't have to last you the rest of your life. Amen. Why would anyone want to carry bitterness in their heart? Well, listen, we'll either get bitter at things or we'll get better at things. Right? Now, Wednesday night messages, you know, are a little bit different because we're trying to grow you. And, and, and a lot of times you have to get back to the basics of that growth and where the rubber meets the road. And, and, and this is like a lot of people. One minute people are serving God. The next minute uh, the FBI can't find them. That's how some people are. 
It's not going to last you. Dust yourself off. Get back on the saddle. Shake it off and move on, right? If we don't do that in life, and I mentioned this a while ago, I'd done something for someone and got sawed off and, and, and felt like I was uh, hanging by a thread and splattered on the ground. But you know what? I, you probably won't hear that from me again about that particular situation because I'm not going to let it bother me. I know what was done. I know what was asked of me. I know what I've done. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it don't seem fair sometimes, right? For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. A just man is a lawful man, a righteous man. Rising up again is what God's people do when they've been cast down, when they've been overthrown, when they've been, uh, uh, when they fall, fall down. They get up uh, and they dust themselves off and they continue to go on for God and no matter what kind of struggles that they've been through. I'm looking at people in here tonight. I don't have to re uh, remind you who you are. You've been through some terrible things this year. You have been heartbroken. You have been uh, uh, physically and emotionally and spiritually drained by everything that has come your way but yet you found your way to get to the house of God tonight and you found your way to listen to what's being said from thus saith the word of God what you did is you got up you buckled up your boots and you got back on the horse and you began to ride sometimes people give up too easy right sometimes people give up too easy Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. You see, that word offend means a stumbling, means or, uh, uh, an occasional stumbling block, or to stumble or to fall. See, God might have let you get hurt so his word will become more important to you. Psalm 119, 71, it's good for me that I have been afflicted, the psalmist said, that I might learn thy statutes. See, Elijah up under the juniper tree was worn out. He was tired. But God sent an angel to make him some food. He slept and he rested. And then God urged him to get up and get back in the saddle. And there was work to be done. And there were kings that needed to be anointed and installed. And there were young preacher boys that needed to be recruited. And people depended on him. You got to get up. You got to get up. I believe it was, uh, it's probably been maybe four or five years ago. I had preached 27 nights in a row or days in a row and nights, uh, including the times that I was in here. And Scott, I was tired, buddy. I was tired after night seven. <laughs> you had 20 more on of that. I felt like I was a, Aaron, I felt like I was a walking corpse, man. I was worn out. You go and you, and, and, and you preach yourself to death and people's preaching you to death and it's a, 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 a revival time and people are having a good time and people are getting saved and people are shouting all over the building having a great time in the Lord and then all of a sudden it hits you like a ton of bricks and you're like, man, I don't even know if I can go another day. You drive eight hours to this place and then you come back and you go four hours to this place and four hours over there and eight hours down there and then by the time you finish up, you're dragging. And don't think there wasn't many a times that I just wanted to lay in a hotel room sometime and say, I just don't think I can go tonight. But you know what? I had to. I had to. Because God had it lined out for me to. And God don't make mistakes. Amen. Number two, why do we need to get back on the saddle? The roundup you were hired for is not finished. <laughs> I'm going to say this as nicely as I can tonight, but uh, these cows ain't going to drive themselves to the market. We're not going to get this herd to the stockyard with you lying on the ground. God signed us on to round up every single man, woman, boy, and girl and get them to heaven. <laughs> They're not going to win themselves. You see, Romans 10, 14 tells us plain, how then shall they call on him in who they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear 
without a preacher how shall they hear we don't have the luxury when we get thrown off the saddle to just lay there there's work to be done we need every born again believer to get back on the saddle and begin to ride and learn that there are souls out there that need to be converted that there are people that need to turn to Christ and away from the world they need to understand and know that there was a man named Jesus that died for them and they need to know that he can change their life take away those things out of their life that shouldn't be there put those things in their life that should be there and live a life of righteousness that's what our God can do amen there's work to be done we need every able bodied person to get in on the roundup <laughs> to finish this incredible assignment when I first started pastoring let me tell you a secret when I first started pastoring I didn't want nobody else to do nothing. You know why? Because I'd been let down so many times, I didn't feel like they could get it and get it done like the way I wanted it. If I wanted it done right, I was going to do it myself. But you know what I've learned the last 15 years? I can't do it all by myself. I had one the other day say, Hey, preacher, this, uh, these windows and this uh, over here needs uh, pressure washing. I said, he said, you mind if I get the pressure washer and come over here and wash these windows and wash the vinyl? I said, no, sir. You go right ahead. Why'd you do that for? Well, it takes pressure off somebody else right now. Right? Had someone that uh, didn't even, doesn't even go to church here to get word back to me. Hey, preacher. You mean Bush Hall got feel for you back there? Well, sure, it needs it. Go ahead. How much did it cost you, preacher? Not a dime. What'd that do? That saved somebody else for getting on up and bringing their equipment over where they could be freed up to do something else, right? And, and, and that's, that's the blessings of ministry. That's the blessings of a church family coming together, uh, not as a big I or a little you, but, you know, uh, letting people do their thing, that they're talented in doing it, that they're, they're able to do and that they can do. And uh, listen, I've been there. I know what it feels like that you have to always vacuum the carpet and you have to always clean the bathrooms and you always have to mop the floors and you always had to cut the grass. You ever tried cutting grass around here? I ain't asking you. <laughs> when we first moved over here we didn't have no money we was broke as a convict broke as could be here I come over here with my little Walmart lawnmower that goes about two miles an hour trying to cut all this grass it'd take me a week if I started up yonder and finished up back here matter of fact I blowed the lawnmower up trying to do it But you know what I found out? Me and my little lawnmower wasn't going to get it done. So when that happens, what happen? you start praying that God send you somebody that can. Hello? Amen. Amen. I was, uh, <laughs> I was tickled to death the other day. Chad told me, he said, uh, Preacher, all these little rocks up here at the top of the driveway, that just bothers me. I said, it bothers me too. He said, you got a broom? I said, we might have one out there in the shed somewhere. He said, I think I'm going to sweep some rocks up. I'm like, go ahead. And you know what I thought after that? If we ain't got a big push broom out there to brush through that parking lot, we need to go buy him one where he can keep them rocks pushed up. Amen. Hey, listen, if that's what they want to do, there's something for everybody to do in the house of God. Amen. The apostle Paul was stoned, and they dragged him out of the city. The Bible says in Acts chapter 14, 
verse 19 through 21. And there came hither certain uh, Jews from Antioch and Iconium uh, who persuaded the people in having stoned Paul and drew him out of the city, supposing that he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came to the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas uh, to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. You see, that Paul was knocked down many a times. He'd been shipwrecked. He'd been snake bit. He'd been stoned. He'd been in prison. He could have said, I give up. But that man kept on going. No matter what people said and no matter how many people tried to kill him. He was on a mission from God. Number three. I'm going to use a word you might not have heard in a lot of while. The reward you were hankering for is not finalized. You ever hankered for anything? You desiring something? Back in the day, those cowboys would work for a dollar a day. But the trail boss made it clear when he hired them, they didn't get paid until the drive was over. So if you got knocked off your saddle, you had to get back up and you had to get back on if you was going to get paid. Right? Sometimes they'd be tempted to leave the drive and go another direction. And they didn't get paid unless they finished what they were hired to do. It didn't matter if it was a thousand miles of dry, dusty trails, rivers, stampedes, Indian attacks, and range wars. It didn't matter. They had an obligation to the trail boss to finish what they signed on to do. We all want the same thing. We need to finish the task that is at hand. The Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I have confidence in my soul tonight of knowing that I'm going to hear God say that. If he does not to say uh, to you, well done, thy good and faithful servant, he's going to say unto you, sorry, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, and the angels of hell are going to pull you into that place in whom you've served all this time. See, your rewards and your crowns is contingent upon finishing right. You don't get paid for how you start. You get paid for how you finish if you fall, you get thrown off. You quit and you don't get back up. You can lose your reward. Second right. John 1, 8, Look to yourselves that we, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. The Apostle Paul was highly motivated to finish what he had started. Paul was not a quitter. Acts 20 and 24, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. He said it again in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Paul looked at it like this in Romans 8, 18. He said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. He said, All this stuff that I'm suffering through now is nothing compared to what I'm going to be when I get over there in that city called heaven. He said, Everything that I'm having to endure, the snake bites, the shipwrecked, uh, uh, getting beat, getting run out of town, getting stoned, all of those things, it's not going to mean much of nothing when I get to heaven because everything's going to be perfect. Perfect. And you know what? We're getting closer every day. Everybody in here is going to die. And if you think you're brave enough to live forever, God will show you real quick you're not. Hebrews 10.35 says, Cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. See, we're leaving here one of two ways, either by the rapture or the resurrection. 
I'd really like to go by the rapture. I want to hear the trumpet sound. Isn't that going to be a glorious day? If we don't hear it sound, then if you're saved and you leave this world, listen, you're going to spend eternity with Christ anyway. The average life of expectancy of a human being has gone up. It's about 76, 77 to 78 years of age. What is that compared to eternity? I want to have a seat at the table. I want to be with my Lord. I've got a friend tonight that walks with me, that talks with me, that people do not see. And it's hard for some, time, some, some people and difficult for them to comprehend that. But when somebody moves inside of you that's bigger than you are, then that's what happens. He talks with you. He walks with you. He, he, you can confide in him. Listen, there'll be times uh, when your friends will let you down. There'll be times when friends will saw you off the limb. There'll be times when friends uh, uh, will turn their back on you. But there's one that will not do that. Stick is closer than a brother, and his name's the Lord Jesus Christ. He was sent from heaven over 2,000 years ago to die for you and to die for me. And for, my, to, for me to grant forgiveness, to, to be granted forgiveness, of my sins to where I can be uh, uh, set free from the bondage that so easily besets me. Many of you or some of you tonight may be bound up by the bonds of sin and you don't know what to do. The best thing you can do is give it to God and let Him remove those bonds. If you're not sure you're saved today, and I say that because I've asked people, I say, hey, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm a Christian. I say, you're pretty sure? They say, yeah, I'm 99% sure I'm going to heaven. I said, you're 100% lost. It's a no-so salvation. You ought to know 100% that you're ready when you die to meet the Lord. People, uh, we don't know what life is going to be. Uh I was talking to an individual yesterday, a healthy young man, he thought. And he started throwing up blood. Not only was he throwing up blood, he was throwing up dried up blood. And what had happened, and he had ulcers inside his body and down his throat and down through his stomach that he did not know he had, and they all ruptured at the same time. He became very ill, very sick was in the IC unit for, a, for a, a, like a couple of weeks. If I mentioned his name, you would know who he is. All of you would probably know who he is. And, 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 and he said, Preacher, if, I, if my wife come and got me and said, Let's go to the ER. They put him in, in, in the uh, intensive care. He had to relearn how to walk. Because he had laid in the bed so long in ICU and not having any movement that he had to actually get people to help him walk and learn how to walk again. And he said, my face looks like a piece of hamburger meat where I face planted several times trying to walk on my own. A young man. I'm talking about a young man that may be in his early 40s. Early 40s at best. He said, the doctor, he went for a visit uh, recently to his doctor for a follow up and the doctor told him said son if you hadn't got to the emergency room that day if you'd have waited one more day we would be having a very different and difficult decision right now you never know what you're walking around with you never know you don't know what's growing inside your body you never know but God does and may God be with us all tonight. I want you to stand as our sister gets us a song of invitation. Every head bowed and every eye closed as she comes and plays softly. If you're here tonight, you don't know Christ as your Savior. This is your night. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. In other words... There's no better day to get your heart right with God than it is today because you're not promised tomorrow.
I have seen athletes in their 20s in perfect condition, never done any type of enhancement drugs, never done anything uh, to harm their body, have a perfect clean report, fall over dead. 24, 25 years old, professional athlete, fall over dead. They do the autopsy. Everybody thinks, oh, it must have been drugs. Oh, it must have been this. It must have been that. The death certificate comes back and says natural causes. How can a 25-year-old die of natural causes? You see, we just don't know. And if we don't know, why do we take a chance? We're playing Russian roulette. We're putting one bullet in the gun and we're spinning the chamber. We're pulling the trigger every day hoping that that bullet's not in the chamber. Trust me, you're going to die. For you Christians here, and you, you may be discouraged, you may be depressed, you may have felt like that you've fallen off the, the, the saddle or you've fallen off the horse, you've fallen off the ladder. Hey, get back up. Be strong in the faith. What's going to take us through the most depressing times in the history of this world is faith in the God of heaven. I'm just going to say a little prayer. If you've got a need, why don't you have the courage to step out, come to an altar prayer tonight. I know we've already prayed, but God might have spoke to you tonight. And if he did, that's just for you. That's just for you. Father God, we do love you. We thank you for Jesus, him dying on the cross of Calvary. God, I pray that you would bless. I pray that you would touch. Help us to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you got a need, you come tonight. God's able. I want you to pray for this young man. He has battles. But God's able. God's able. Satan's going to try to knock him off the horse every time he sees him. But he's got to continue to get up. Got to continue to get up. Anyone else, you still got time if you'd like to come talk to the Lord about anything. Someone will be glad to pray with you and pray for you. All hearts and minds clear. The moral of the story tonight is this. This world and the enemy may knock you down, but you can't stay down. You got to get up. The Lord Jesus Christ voluntarily laid his life on a cross to die for you and I. He could have called 10,000, the Bible says, of his angels to come and take him off of that. But you know where we would be today? We'd be in bad shape, headed for a devil's hell because we would have no Savior. He didn't quit when the job was halfway through. He kept on going. God bless you tonight. Brother Dale, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? God bless you, church.